One of the things that drew me to this position as chair back in 2017 was the residency program. Um, when I first visited and met the residents and saw the residents interacting with each, other, with each other, I thought, you know, this is a quality program and the residents really collaborate well with each other. The first time I attended a conference with the residents, they were raising their hands and volunteering to give answers. And I thought, this is an eager group. I think I'd like to be here. And so education is such an important part of our mission. I mean, our, our tripartite mission is education, research, and patient care. And we're the largest medical school in the country, and we have a large residency program. You know, I'm really proud of our faculty that they've created an environment here that really values education. So Indiana University is the only ophthalmology residency training program in the state of Indiana. We also serve as the primary referral center for the majority of ophthalmology care in Indiana. So what this means for our residents is that they're seeing a very high volume as well as a very high degree of pathology. Our residents are very fortunate to train on a medical campus where our facilities including the VA, Eskenazi Hospital, Riley Children's Hospital, and the Glick Eye Institute are all within a five minute walk of each other. I find that this makes for an experience that is cohesive and consistent and really gives our residents a sense of community here. So in this system, the biggest thing is really having patients. You're going to have you know, patients that move slowly. Uh, patients who are older in a wheelchair and, and it's important to understand and talk to them. That's one of the things that I do convey a lot. Um, you can't just tell somebody, you got to use these three eye drops, uh, next patient. You have to really take the time to explain things for them and if they're not being able to comply with the medications, with the instructions, try to understand why. As a resident, you will uh, have your own uh, patient, your, your own clinic, and supervised by the attendings. Uh, we cover anywhere from comprehensive uh, optical needs to very complex and complicated eye diseases. In fact, uh, one of the faculty members in the past say that uh, this is the most interesting and challenging clinic that he has ever seen because of the complexity of uh, pathology, they're walking through the door. We have a large inpatient service where we see a lot of inpatient pathology, which is interesting. You're in the operating room one to two times a week, uh, and you see uh, a ton of pathology. We treat everything from uh, retinoblastoma to congenital glaucoma to cataracts, although we have a healthy mix, about 50% of strabismus cases, which where residents both their um, first year and their third year will get into the operating room and get to do primary uh, cases as a surgeon. The Conair service provides care to patients in three major areas. One is for patients with various corneal and external diseases. Second is for patients with complicated cataracts or they have problems with the intraocular lenses. The third area is for patients who design premium intraocular lens 
or laser vision correction. Yeah, after someone's time in neuro-ophthalmology, one of the things we really hammer home is the importance of a good history and physical examination. So um, really getting into some of the details of someone's history and sometimes we have a normal examination that a patient has and we, we just have the history to go by and so we, we really emphasize how important that is to ask the right questions, not necessarily to take a long history, but to take one that's um, that's efficient and really um, has a differential diagnosis in mind and to get used to that kind of um, history taking I think is, is an important goal of the rotation. Well, as a tertiary center we see a variety of pathology here in the retina extending from complex cases of diabetic retinopathy with tractional retinal detachment up to inherited retinal disease with variety of uh, presentations. So what's great about Dr. Cantor, Dr. Lynn, Dr. Schroeder, me, we've all trained in different places so we all approach things differently and it vastly adds to your ability as a clinician and a surgeon. I think it's incredibly valuable for everyone uh, engaging in medical training to have some understanding of the basic research practice, to, uh, to learn how we develop hypotheses, how we test them, how we try and push medical knowledge forward. Having an appreciation for that, even at a, a fairly fundamental level, I think uh, makes clinicians more able to readily interpret the medical literature, to understand the shortcomings and the limitations of our knowledge, uh, and where fields will move next. Anytime you have a team, you need the whole team to contribute, and everybody has their role. You cannot just have offensive team players. You cannot just have defensive players. You must work as a team, and I see our department that way as well. We have basic and translational research who interact with the clinicians, uh, who interact with the patients, and so we want to make sure that we have that whole team because ultimately my job as a clinician is to take care of people, and the best way of doing that is to hear what their concerns are as well as figure out what to do to make them better, and it takes a whole team to do that. When I meet with the new residents, I usually tell them that we expect a lot from them. Uh, four years after medical school is a short time to learn to be an outstanding ophthalmologist or to be on your way to being an outstanding ophthalmologist. So they know that they're expected to work hard, to read, uh, to become as competent as they can. At the same time, it's a two-way street. I tell our residents they can expect a lot from us as faculty members, that education is important to us. I tell our faculty members that they're to teach during clinics and in the operating room. Our faculty members know that mentorship is an important part of their job. So our residents reach out to them for career advice, for fellowship advice and letters. And so uh, our residents expect a lot from us and we expect a lot from them in return. I love watching them grow as clinicians and also learn how to be surgeons. But most importantly, I love watching the personal growth that our residents go through during their training here. Residency is such a huge moment in our medical training and to see our residents get comfortable and confident in their new identity as ophthalmologists, ready for practice is really awesome. So as a PGY4 resident, I've had the opportunity to you know, be here for a few years now, and one of the things that's really struck out to me is, is how dedicated our faculty are. Um, as we all know, with COVID, we've you know, been interrupted with interview season and you know, temporarily with some surgical experience. Um, you know, and one of the staples in our program or any programs that we do, you know, large group wet labs throughout the year. Um, and so initially, when we had to kind of shut down things, we really had to cancel those. Um, the faculty has re have really stepped up um, and offered one-on-one -on -one wet labs and have been working closely with, with really all of our residents to make sure we still get those experiences. So I think it's just one example of, you know, how dedicated our faculty are. Um, and now that we're able to, with social distancing, and um, we're now able to do some smaller group wet labs, which is great, but they're still continuing to offer um, and work with our residents one-on-one. -on -one. And I think that's a real, real benefit of our program. In terms of experiences, it's just a, a really great program. What stands out to me is um, 
the spirit of teamwork and um, working together to get the best care that you can for a patient. Um, you know, you'll be you'll be seeing a lot of really interesting and complicated stuff, but you'll never feel like you're on your own to deal with something um, that you know you don't know how to do. So there will always be people around to help you and to um, help get you to a level where you're comfortable teaching other people. And that's been a really, it's been a big treat to kind of be along for that process. I felt that even as like a medical student bumbling around, not really knowing my way around clinic or how to really look at the cornea on a slit lamp, um, I felt like all the faculty really, um, really prioritized my education and um, trying to make sure that I understood and I saw what I was supposed to be seeing. Um, now as a resident, you know, from day one, I really feel like I've been part of the IU family. All of the faculty and my senior residents, um, just very welcoming and very understanding that I, I am starting out, but um, just having patience and trying to help me learn the things that I need to be a better ophthalmologist. As I've gone through my first couple of months here, what's become apparent to me is that um, this is a place where I'm going to receive outstanding training as well as be treated with respect as a learner and those were two very important things to me as I was choosing a residency program and I found that to be true here. I've been very happy uh, with my first several months here. It's not easy to train surgeons so if I had to pick one thing that I valued the most during my training at IU it would be uh, these attendings I trained with. I felt very well prepared after residency. Uh, my surgery numbers were well beyond the national average, but more importantly, they were quality cases. You will see a wide variety of cases, which will prepare you for most everything you will see after training. To see that we have a great work-life balance um, and that everything here isn't just grinding all the time, that they can come here and enjoy themselves and learn um, and also build a life and it's a great city um, and so I just like to make sure that they know when they're considering our program that we have so much more to offer than um, just kind of being in the Midwest. One of the unique aspects of our program is its adaptability. What I mean by that is at the end of each year we ask our residents you know, how can this program be better? We ask our faculty the same question. And in fact, our residents, our chief residents, are represented uh, on our education leadership uh, council that meets uh, each month to really make the major decisions about where our program needs to go in the future.